same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing that same old voice tell the same old lies. You are trying to fill that same old holes in time. There's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. You feel love. He's a way maker. You need freedom or saving. He's a prison shaking savior. He got a chain. He's a chain breaker. We all search for the light of day in the dead of night. We all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We all run to things we know that just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. You feel lost. He's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison sinking savior. If he got a chain, he's a chain breaker. You believe it, you receive it. If you can't feel it, somebody testify. Testify, you got a pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a brilliant shaking savior. He got a chain. He's a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. He got a chain. He's a chain breaker. Thank you guys and welcome to the Southern Valley Community Church. Good to have you with us this morning. May God richly bless you. We got a little housekeeping to take care of this morning. The uh, I so was visiting some folks this last week, and they said, we've been sending our tithes, but they've been coming back to us because we sent them to the street address. You need to send it to Lucerne Valley Community Church, Lucerne Valley, P.O. Box 788-92356. Okay. If you send it to that P.O. Box, we will cash your check. No problem. So we invite you to come. The other thing that we're excited about is today we actually give out our first package for our mobile Sunday school and we're proud to announce we've already got about 40 children lined up then so we're growing our church even though we're in the midst of whatever they're calling it today the pandemic I guess all right we're gonna have a word of prayer and then Ralph got some words of wisdom for us father again we just love you this morning we give you praise we give you glory we think of you being so good to us we hold the world up to you today. Your word says that thou you know, so loved the world that you gave your son. Oh, Lord, the world's in trouble. We know you know it. I think the world needs to know that they're in trouble. We just ask you to move upon all the leadership in all the different areas. Lord, just help us. We are weak and feeble people, and we need your help. We're just going to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ralph has some words of wisdom. Okay, today I'm going to speak about a young black man. And I'm not talking about the cop or the one that he killed or anything. It's about the young man. Well, this young 
cop lady, she went into the wrong room, she says, and she shot this, shot this, his brother and killed his brother. So they were in court and they found her guilty. And uh, they were in court and uh, the, the young man got up to say what he wanted to say to her. But everybody said, oh boy, he's really gonna rip into her. And he said, I forgive you. I had a lot of hate for you, but I forgive you because God forg forgives. And all I, I don't even want you to go to jail. All I want you to do is accept Jesus in your life. That's all I want from you. And, and you know, he was really serious and that, that really got me. And, and uh, so he says, he told the judge, can I get up and hug her? He asked, he asked the judge about three times and the judge finally says, Go ahead. So he went and he hugged her and she was crying like a baby. And uh, the cops came around because they thought he was going to do something to her. But no, he didn't. And uh, what he showed was love. He didn't show hate. You know, everybody shows hate. He showed love. And that, and that said, you know, that's the, that's, that's the way we should all be. Show love, not hate. And uh, so they, so all the, the, the people that he was with, the black people, that's what it was. They all said, oh, he's an Uncle Tom. He went up, he kissing up to the white people and all that. So after he got out of court, the, you know, on YouTube, whatever the young people go on, they were saying that about him. They were just knocking him to pieces. So after court, they asked him, why did you say that? He says, because I got Jesus in my heart. God loved that girl, so how can I hate her? And man, that really, that really got to me. And uh, that's what we should be doing. Not, oh, I'm gonna get even with you. I'm gonna do this, you know? No, he did more good than he could have did if he was angry. And they asked him, why did you forgive her? He says, because I had hate and God don't want hate. He's about love. And that's my uh, little sermon for today. And uh, let's say a little prayer. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for everything you do, Lord. And I thank you for that young man, Lord. That was the first time I heard something good came out of a person's mouth in a long time, Lord, besides my pastor. And uh, <laughs> just thank you for everything, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. All about love. Group has a special for us now. Count <clears throat> Sharp. There's so many cold and lonely souls on the streets tonight. Where's the light? Where's the light? At that lonely prisoner in his cell, we'll toss and turn all night. To that hungry man in a foreign 
light. A little food to make things right. But where is the light? Where's the light? So I'll get up and go and let my actions show that Jesus in me makes things right. Cause I'm talk to you this morning about salt and light. Salt and light. Salt that can be tasted and the light that could be seen. Salt that can be tasted and light that can be seen. We're going to be in Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses you're very familiar with, but we're going to look at it a little differently today. Blessed, verse 11, Chapter 5, Book of Matthew. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and tramped underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and your good works may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Let's pray again. Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to take your word and illuminate it and make it alive in our hearts and our minds. Lord, let us not just be salt, but let us be salt that can be tasted. Let us not just be a light, but let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and our good works may glorify our Father which is heaven. For we are the light. Shine, Jesus, shine. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to read it to you now out of the Amplified Version. So if you have one, I strongly recommend. Those are the two versions I use a lot. The King James, New King James and the Amplified Version. Because some of these sentences don't make a whole lot of sense. How can you feel like you're blessed when people are talking evil about you, making up stories, scheming behind your back? How can you be blessed? And certainly, how can you rejoice? Well, maybe it's because you just don't know who you are in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But listen carefully to the words now out of the Amplified Version, verse 11. Blessed, happy to be envied, and spiritually prosperous. Are you happy about Jesus in your life? With life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of your outward conditions, you're happy anyway. You are, are you, with people revile you and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Be glad and surprised, supremely joyful, for your reward in heaven is great, strong, and intense. 
For this same way, people persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can its saltness be restored? It is not good for anything any longer, but to be thrown out and to be trotted under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck measure, but on a lamp stand. And it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your mortal excellence and your praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Wow. Is that a mouthful? Blessed. Now I want to talk to every believer. If you have sincerely accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You know him and you were sincere. But maybe the devil has kind of drawn you away. Maybe you have walked away a little bit. I want you to know, I want every believer to know that you are blessed. And I want you to understand what it means you are blessed. Don't let the devil steal from you your salvation, your experience, your joy. Let no man steal your joy. I hear the amen. amen. Let no man take your joy. Blessed means this. So every believer, I want you to get this in your head. I want you to confess this and announce it right in the devil's face before we leave this morning. I am a child of God because I am a child of God. I am blessed. Blessed are you. That's what he said. These are the words of Jesus. If you got the red letter edition, it's in red. Amen. Jesus said, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. There's the key. For my sake. Blessed means what? It means Actually, the word blessed in the truest sense is really exclusive. It's only for believers. In the Bible sense, a sinner can't be blessed unless they're accepting Jesus as a personal Savior. Interesting definitions from out of the Greek. Made holy, sanctified, supremely favored. I like that one. You as a believer are supremely Favored. You're not just favored, you're supremely favored. <laughs> Blissfully happy or contented. Only a child of God truly knows what it is to be blessed. Praise the Lord. There's a deep, settled peace in my soul. And no matter, there's a deep, settled peace in my soul, no matter of my circumstances. My circumstances do not Tell me if I'm blessed or not blessed. I am blessed because I'm a child of the king. And the devil's a liar. Come whatever may come. Knowing that you are right with God. Knowing that you are in his. Knowing that you are his. And nothing and nobody can snatch you out of his hand. You're his. You've been bought with a price. With the blood of the lamb. And you can say, I am a child of the king. Praise the Lord. So, how many children of the king do we have out there this morning? How many children of the king do we have at home? Bless God, no matter what my circumstances are, I'm a child of the king. I am blessed. No matter what they say. Wow. I am a child of the king, therefore I am blessed. Say what you want to say about me. <laughs> do what you want to do, devil, to me. But the bottom line is, I'm a child of the king. Therefore, I am blessed. Amen. Amen. Well, that's just the definition. I'm about ready to start to preach. <laughs> that's just the definition. Because I'm blessed because of my relationship. I have a relationship with God Almighty. I'm at peace with God. I'm no longer at war with God, but I'm at peace with God and I have the peace of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. 
Today you are a child of God. And because you're a child of God. You are blessed. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior. I am heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He went to the cross for my salvation. He rose again for my justification. He has made me heirs and joint heirs with him. He's paid the price with his blood for my salvation. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I am blessed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed. Blessed beyond degree, supremely favored. <laughs> yeah. I'm a child of the king. And I'm also blessed because I possess God's divine presence in my very being. His divine nature resides in me. And if you're a child of God, no matter what the devil's been telling you, no matter how restricted or how confined you think he has made you. You are a child of the king. The devil's a liar. You need to stand up from wherever you are and tell the devil that you're a child of the king and you are blessed. You have a relationship not only with God the Father, not only with Jesus Christ the Son, but you have a personal relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. And he abides in you. And that is the manifested power of God resides in you. You are blessed. Amen. Wow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. What a God we serve. I want everybody to say, I am blessed. I'll <laughs> uh, say it again together. One, two, three. I, I am, am blessed. blessed. You at home say, I am blessed. You daddies that are leading your family right now, tell them to say it, and you all say it together. If you're a child of the king, and I know a lot of you, you don't come to churches as long as you ought to, but we're going to be open in a few weeks, and when we are, this place ought to be packed. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? All right. You ought to be standing up and saying right now that you're blessed right there in your house. And all this happens not because of you. Not because of you. Understand, you are blessed for his sake. So you are blessed so you can show the world how good he is. In spite of what you've done, you've been forgiven. In spite of where you've been, you've been forgiven. In spite of what you've said, you've been forgiven. You have a new life in Christ Jesus. It's all for him. For my sake, he said. You are blessed. You are blessed. Those are the words of Christ. And he's not a liar. So learn to tell the devil. He's a liar. Amen? Amen. Remember, you're not blessed because of you. It is God. <coughs> Excuse me. It is God to be the glory. The world doesn't like you. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something you may not have heard for a while. The world doesn't like you much as a Christian. I'm going to tell you why. Because you look too much like Jesus. <laughs> He's righteous. The world doesn't like righteousness. You know, we hear the other side of the balance all too often. We hear what we need, and, and certainly we do need. Certainly we need to grow. Certainly we need to want all be more like Jesus. But I want you to know that you've been washed in the blood. Amen? Amen? You stand holy before God because of the blood of the Lamb. You look a lot like Jesus, and the devil can't stand it. Amen. So they don't like you. They don't like him either. They didn't know him, didn't acknowledge him. But he was still the Son of God. And you are still a child of the God. Amen. You have been blessed. And it's all for his sake. And they don't like you because they didn't like him. Wow. But you must be about your father's business. And the more you're about your father's business, the more the world hates you. Have you ever noticed that how the world can do this and do that and do the other thing. But if a Christian tries to do it. Eh, they just can't stand it. When somebody turns the lights on. Wow. 
The world is a lover of darkness. And we are lovers of the light. Wow. Everybody say, I must be. Must be about about my, father's my father's business. It's all for his sake. Ah. See, 1 John 3, chapter 1 says this. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. And see what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. <laughs> so we are. The reason the world does not know, recognize, acknowledge us is that it does not know, acknowledge, re recognize Him. See, you're too much like Jesus, so they're not comfortable around you. So they make fun of you. They ignore you. They'd rather you weren't there. But that's all right. Jesus lived to God be the glory. Amen? Amen? Everything we do and say is for his sake. It's all for Jesus. All to Jesus. Oh, our witnessing, our helping, our feeding, our teaching, we are poured out like wine for his sake. Oh, to God be the glory. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. <laughs> I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. Do you know it? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. I surrender all. Wow. You see, that's what the world needs. It needs you Christians to know who you are. Don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about their schemes and their plans and the plots of the enemy. You are blessed. And it's all for his sake. And because you're so blessed, you need to rejoice. What a crazy thing. He says you're blessed <laughs> when men revile and persecute you and say all oh, manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. You're blessed. And then he says rejoice. <laughs> it's a crazy Greek word because this word means get up and dance. Oh boy. There we go. Wow. Supremely joyful. Jump for joy, one translation. Most of them use the word leap. Leap for joy. It means be happy. Be content. Be joyful. Don't go around with your thumb in your mouth and mope around and say, oh, they're picking on me. Oh, they're talking about me. You're blessed. Be a light. Be salt. Be all you can be for Jesus. You are blessed. So rejoice right in the devil's face. Get up and dance a jig in front of the devil. <laughs> wow. Doesn't that feel good? Amen. Huh? Everybody say, I, I am, am blessed. blessed. Wow. You know what is neat? Because it means supremely joyful. Jump for joy, leap for joy. Do not pout. Don't stick your finger in your mouth and start to mope around. <laughs> leap for joy, for great is your reward in heaven. Exalt him and be glad. Amen. Exalt him. Lift him up. Praise God in the devil's face when they're talking about you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> hey, you know what? You're in good company, too. He goes on and says, what? Rejoice <coughs> and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. And then what's he say? He persecuted the prophets that were before 
though they persecuted the prophets were before you. So they persecuted. In other words, you're being persecuted the same way the prophets were. You're in pretty good company. God's standing up, all those who've been persecuted, I'm going to call a few of them up there. Elijah, would you come forward? Jeremiah, would you come forward? David, would you come forward? Noretta, would you come forward? What? Wow. Huh? Wow. Pat, even Pat, come forward. Ralph. Oh, Ralph, oh goodness. Come, can you imagine being in such company? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So, so persecuted they, the prophets who were before you. You're being persecuted just like they were. Why, what? For his sake, Amen. for his glory. Amen. So don't go around with your thumb in your mouth. Go around being blessed and shine. Jesus shine. Wow. We are so, so blessed. Wow. Romans 8, 18 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Can you imagine standing before the throne of God in spite of what all the devil has plotted, in spite of what all the gossip has said, you are standing before the Lord and you are the glory of God. You are his child. You're his child, so you're blessed. Let no man steal your joy. Amen. You are blessed. So rejoice. And because you're blessed, and because you're joy, the world needs you. The world needs you, Christian, today. The world needs you like it's never needed you before. It doesn't need just salt. It needs you to be good salt. Are you good salt or you're bad salt? See, there was bad salt back in the Bible's days. It wasn't refined. It wasn't just bleached out of the ocean. But it was out of swampy grounds down off the Dead Sea. And sometimes the contaminants would be blended with the mud and with the salt. And because of the contaminants of the ocean and the water and what have you, as it was extracted, much time it was no good. Because it was contaminated. And so it lost its saltiness. And so they'd throw it out in the street to be trotted underfoot. <clears throat> and even today, they even pour it on ceilings and on rooftop, flat rooftops to help seal the roofs and dry out the ground so the children can play on it. Because Jesus said, when you have lost your flavor, when you have lost your savor, you're no good. A Christian needs to be a little salty. You see, because you add flavor, you accent the good in life. And the world needs to see the good. As Ralph was said earlier about this story about this young man, they need to see the good. They need to see the good in you. Be the salt. You are the salt of the earth. Uh, you are the salt of the earth that can be tasted. Uh, Father, we just love you. We give you praise. Lord, we want you to just teach us, Lord, about this salt. Show us how important it is that we be all that you can be. We just thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you've given us. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Salt is only one of the pictures that he gives us. The other one is light. You are the light of the earth. You're not only the salt of the earth, but you're also the light. And as salt preserves and brings out the best favors of the food, so believers should affect others positively. If a seasoning that has no flavor has lost its taste, it's lost its value, and it's good for nothing. Wow. Jesus clearly told his disciples, he used the word, you are the salt of the earth. You. What he's really saying is, because it's the emphatic part of the Greek language, it means you, my followers, are salt. How many of you like seasoning? I like seasoning. <clears throat> we go to a favorite place on Fridays to eat our lunch. And one of the reasons why we go is because they have clam chowder. <laughs> and they got good clam chowder. But I like to do some things with my clam chowder. I like to take pepper and put in my clam chowder. I know that's not salted pepper. But I also put cholula in my clam chowder. <laughs> and I stir it all together. And it just tastes so good. Why? Because it has flavor. It's distinct. I can taste it. And it feels good on the tum tum. <laughs> How about you? As salt is the food, so are you to the world. So are you to the world. The world needs to see you salty. It needs to see your full character. You see, you bring out what is good on the earth. And as salt does for food an accent that we should do for the world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You are the light of the world. <laughs> See, I believe that Christians can make a difference in the world today. In spite of all the mayhem, all the trouble, and all that is being said and done, I believe that Christians are still the answer. God is still the answer. Jesus is still the answer. Amen. And so he requires that you be salt and that you be light. As salt makes a difference in people's food, so light makes a difference in their surroundings. How many of you have ever been in a dark hallway? We used to do some things in college in the dark hallways. I won't tell you about all of them. But some of them we'd spin guys around until they get so dizzy and the point was that they had to get from one end of the hall to the other in the hall and it was dark and they were dizzy. How successful do you think that worked out? Usually they're battered and bruised by the time they finally get to the other end, if they make it at all. Light is important for your surroundings. His word is what? It is a lamp unto my, and a unto my path. The world needs to see the light. They need to see where they're headed world Christian we need to let the world know where they're headed we need to turn the lights on and up and let them know Jesus saves God is still in charge there is hope there is love just like Ralph was talking about Eric love is the answer not battle not hate not war love but where are they going to see it Christian if you don't shine what good's a flashlight if you don't turn it on what good are these lights if we don't throw the switch on? As salt brings out the flavor, so light shows us the way. It is important for us to both taste 
like salt and to shine as a light. Who turns out the lights? Sin, disobedience, pride. Who turns on the lights? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. world. I am the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. Wow. But pride and disobedience and sin, worldliness, the fact that we compromise and lose our flavor, we become contaminated because we don't stand for Jesus. This little light of mine, we used to sing, I'm going to let it shine. Cal, come to your guitar if you would. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In our case, shine all over Lucerne Valley. <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. Will you let it shine? Will you stand up in spite of what they say, in spite of their plots and their plans and all the disappointments and all the heartbreaks? You are blessed. Remember, you are blessed. Rejoice, even in the midst of this pandemic. Rejoice. Praise God. Be a light in the midst of this storm. Let the world know where they are headed. Be a light. Be salt. Be a light. The world needs you to taste like salt. The world needs you to shine as a light like never before. And it's all done. You want to taste like salt for his sake. You want to shine like Jesus for his sake. That then they see your good works and that your good works may glorify your Father, which is in heaven. You're not doing it for honor, you're not doing it for glory, you're not doing it to be set on a pedestal, you're doing it for His sake. To God be the glory for great things He has done and the great things He will do. But the world needs you to shine. Shine, Jesus shine, like never before. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your lesson. Like never before, we have seen this. Blessed are we, when men shall revile you and speak all evil against you falsely for my sake. For great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice! Rejoice! I'm a child of the King. Lord, let me live like it. The world needs me. The world needs every Christian to stand up and shine like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. Oh, river flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth the word, Lord.